Till now, we have learned that resting membrane potential is mainly generated due to freely permeable potassium ions. Now, the potassium leak channels were responsible for it. So, due to these channels, potassium came out of neuron and formed a positive environment outside and a negative environment inside. But to maintain that resting membrane potential, potassium leakage is not enough. For that, we have sodium potassium ATPase pump. So, the pump were responsible for the maintenance of resting membrane potential. When Hodgkin experimentally verified this resting membrane potential in Squid's giant exon, he found that minus 65 millivolt was the resting membrane potential. But in case of human neuron, that resting membrane potential is around minus 70 millivolt. But if we calculate the resting membrane potential considering the NAST equation, then we have to take into account only one ion because the equilibrium potential is for only one ion. So if we calculate the NAST equation in case of a squid exon, taking potassium as the single most important ion and recalling that chart of concentration of ions that we have seen, putting all the values of constant in the NAST equation, we are left with this expression. And if you remember that in case of squid, the outside concentration of potassium was around 20 millimolar and the inside concentration of potassium was around 400 millimolar. Calculating the equilibrium potential for the potassium in a squid exon, the answer comes around minus 76 millivolt, which is much more negative than what Hodgkin and Huxley found, which was around minus 65 millivolt in the oscilloscope. This is because the resting neurons are also slightly permeable to other ions like sodium, chloride. So this NAST equation can only take into account only one ion. So there is requirement of another equation and that is Goldman equation. This Goldman equation takes all the ions that can cross the cell membrane into account and therefore can calculate the membrane potential more accurately. Goldman's equation is just the combination of many NARST equation taking the permeability of the ions into consideration. Just here a term PK means permeability of potassium, same PN the permeability of sodium and PCL the permeability of chloride. Here you can see that chloride I or the concentration of chloride inside is in the numerator. It is because the chloride has a charge of minus one and so the ratio of chloride outside is to the ratio of chloride inside is just inverted. Let's solve this equation taking permeability coefficients of these ions into consideration. Here, if the potassium has a permeability of 100%, then sodium would be having just permeability of 4% and chloride ions has the permeability of around 45%. We will use this information. But before that, if we consider that the membrane is impermeable to sodium and chloride, that means permeability is 0%, then we will see the equation shortens into the NAST equation for potassium. But taking all the ions into account and putting the value of permeability in this equation, we can use the trick to divide numerator and denominator by the permeability constant of potassium. So the permeability constant of potassium by the permeability constant of potassium becomes 1 and the permeability constant of sodium by the permeability constant of potassium will become 0 0.04 as it is 4% by the 100%. So substituting the values we will get the final form of equation like this from that chart of extracellular and intracellular fluid of a squid's giant exon on which Hodgkin has worked we will finally see that the equation can be solved to the result of minus 62 millivolt which is much closer to the experimental value of minus 65 millivolt. Now, to understand action potential, we need to know the activity of different types of ion channels present in the exon membrane. In the 1940s, when Hodgkin was studying the electrical properties of neurons, there were no laboratory techniques that could enable them to investigate the electrical properties of single ion channel. It was in the late 1970s when two scientists named Sackman and Nihar who developed a technique named patch clamping and for which they won the Nobel Prize in 1991. 
Patch clamping is widely used by neurobiologists and it enables them to record the real time tiny electrical current caused by the opening and closing of single ion channel. In this procedure, a thin glass micro pipette filled with electrically conductive solution is positioned against the membrane of the cell. So this is a micro a pipette and it can be observed under microscope only. After positioning the pipette against the neuron membrane, a slight suction is generated. Slight suction in the micro pipette generates a seal between the membrane and pipette tip. We know that the membrane has separation of charges across it. So the membrane acts as a battery. If we connect the positive and negative terminal of a battery by wire, then there will be flow of electric current. Similarly, whenever this ion channel inside this membrane patch, so the membrane covered inside the micro pipette is called patch. So whenever the ion channel opens, there will be flow of some ions into the pipette or out of the pipette. And that can be recorded by oscilloscope as ionic current. If the channel present in that patch of membrane is a sodium channel, then there will be entry of positive charge whenever that channel opens. So entry of positive charge means current inside the cell and it can be recorded by the oscilloscope in this manner. So here I is referred to as ionic current. When the channel is closed, then there are no current inside or outside. But when the channel is open, then the current can be seen in the inside. As there are high sodium outside and low sodium inside, so there is flow of sodium whenever the channel opens. But in case of potassium channel, the current flow would be in the outside. Now let's see the changes in the membrane potential difference when the channel opens or closes. Just see the fluctuation in the membrane potential when a single sodium channel just opens or remain closed. We know that there are very less sodium leak channels in the exon membrane. But there are many voltage sensitive sodium channels. So these channels which we are observing through patch clamping is voltage sensitive sodium channel. In the giant exon of squid, the membrane potential of the resting neuron is minus 65 millivolt. But whenever sodium channel opens due to the entry of positively charged ions, that is sodium, the inside becomes more positive and the membrane potential reverses and it becomes plus 55 millivolt. Voltage sensitive sodium channel can have three different state. It can be inactivated as you can see in the screen or it can remain open or it can remain closed. Here closed and inactivated are slightly different. Now let's try to figure out the working principle of different types of ion channels. One is sodium leak channel. This is the integral protein forming the channel and the plasma membrane is represented by this blue line. So this blue line means just phospholipid bilayer. Leak channels are always open. They are freely permeable to the ions. So if there are more sodium outside, then sodium can freely enter into the cell. And similarly, if there are more sodium inside, then sodium will freely leave the cell through these leak channels. Another important category of sodium channel is the voltage gated sodium channel here. And these channels are sensitive to membrane potential. So if there are changes of membrane potential from minus 65, to say minus 50, then there is three dimensional configurational change in the protein channel. We'll see this later, but now we need to understand that these channels are only present in exon starting from exon hilo. These channels are absent in dendrites and cell body, whereas sodium leak channels were present throughout the neuron. And our third category of sodium channel are the ligand gated sodium channels. These channels are present in dendrite and cell body and plays an important role in synaptic transmission. Here, the channel protein contains an active site for the binding of a chemical substance. Due to the binding of specific chemicals in the active site of channel protein, it induces certain changes in the three-dimensional configuration of that protein and the channel opens 
allowing free movement of sodium across it. Now, our main concern for the generation of nerve impulse is voltage gated sodium channel. We have already seen that voltage gated sodium channel can remain in three different states. First, we are seeing the closed state. When the neuron is in rest, then there is more negative inside and there is a potential difference of minus 70 millivolt and we call it resting membrane potential. Here you can see the parts of the voltage gated sodium channel and this red color polypeptide or protein is the inactivation gate and that green color part is the activation gate and this activation gate is attached to a positively charged protein. This positively charged protein is attracted towards the inner boundary of the membrane as there are more negative charge inside. As soon as some positive charge arrives in the inner side of the membrane, then the potential difference across the membrane decreases. So from 70 millivolt, it decreases to minus say 55. And due to the presence of positive charges inside, this positively charged protein is repelled towards the outer side of the membrane and thereby opening this activation gate. So this is the open state of voltage gated sodium channel. So as soon as there are ample amount of positive charge inside so that it can change the potential difference from minus 70 to minus 55, this voltage sensitive channel opens. And here is the interesting part of this channel. With the opening of this activation gate, sodium rushes into the cell and inside becomes more positive. This is called depolarization of the membrane. Earlier, the membrane was in polarized state. Now, it is in depolarized state and the membrane potential reverses to plus 30 millivolt. Now, this inactivation gate of this channel protein is hydrophobic in nature. That means it is composed of many non-polar amino acids. And similarly, this part, this red part of the opposite side of the protein, which was earlier protected by this activation gate, is also hydrophobic in nature. So there will be hydrophobic interaction or non-polar interaction between these two protein. As soon as this positively charged protein moves away and opening this activation gate. So basically the sodium channel or voltage gated sodium channel remain open for a very brief period of time and very soon it enters into a state of inactivation. So this is inactivated sodium channel. So now we know why this channel is sensitive to voltage change across cell membrane. We need to understand this simple concept that a sodium channel always inactivates after opening. So it follows a certain direction. After opening, it is inactivated. And after inactivation, it cannot reopen. It has to be closed before again opening. When the neuron is at rest, the voltage gated sodium channels are closed. That is at minus 70 millivolt, which is its resting membrane potential. The sodium channels, the voltage gated sodium channels are closed. But as soon as there is little change in this membrane potential, that is from minus 70 to just minus 55, this voltage gated sodium channel opens. And due to the entry of a lot of sodium, the inside become more positive and the membrane potential changes to plus 30 millivolt. And by that time, the channel becomes inactivated. If we talk about potassium channel, then there are three types of potassium channel also, voltage gated, ligand gated and leak channels. Voltage gated sodium channel opens for a very short period of time. It is around one to two millisecond. Whereas when voltage gated potassium channel opens, it remains in that state for a longer period. So it is slow to act. We will see these channels in the action potential. But for now, you need to understand that these tiny sodium channels or rather any channels with charge in it feels a great amount of electric force even when the cell is in rest. But wait, the electric potential is just 70 millivolt and that is very trivial. Let's see how much electric field this potential difference can generate across the cell membrane, which generally has a thickness of around just 3 nanometer. Well, the electrical field strength can be calculated by minus 70 millivolt, that is 0 0.07 volt by 3 nanometer, that is 3 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 7 centimeter, and that comes around 2 lakh volt per centimeter. 
which is a very impressive number for a tiny charged protein in the membrane. So any fluctuation in the membrane potential can cause these charged proteins to swing vigorously in the molecular level. So how a action potential generates and what is it? Here we can see a multipolar neuron and the dendrites and cell body of this neuron is connected to many other exon. Let's see one of the junction produced by these two neurons, which we also call synapse. From the terminal knob of the exon, neurotransmitters are released. And this neurotransmitter binds to its receptor present in the dendrite. This acts as chemical signal. And in response to chemical, some ligand gated channels, which we have already seen, opens. Now, if the channel is sodium channel, then sodium moves into the cell. Whereas, if the channel is potassium channel, then potassium moves out of the cell. You know already the concentration for all these ions inside and outside neuron. Due to the entry of more sodium, as the ligand gated sodium channels are open, there are more positive inside and it induces a change in the membrane potential from its equilibrium potential of minus 70 millivolt. As more and more positive charges enters into the neuron, the chemical signal has now been transformed to electrical signal due to the fact that this neuron is connected to many other neurons through synaptic junctions. So there will be entry of positive ions from all those junctions. When this positive ions diffuses slowly towards this exon hillock, then an action potential will be generated because the voltage sensitive sodium channel or which can sense any change in membrane potential are present in this exon hillock due to the entry of positively charged ions or sodium through open sodium channels at one location these charged ions are attracted to adjacent areas on the inside of the membrane that are more negative and thus there is a rapid flow of electric current or you can say movement of ions away from the site of the open sodium channels. However, this local flow of electric current decays as it spread and it does not spread very far because the cell membranes are not completely impermeable to ions or in this case sodium. Also the active sodium potassium ATPS pump continuously removes sodium from inside and thereby the sodium that entered cannot travel much longer. Even though the flow of electric current along plasma membrane can only extend over short distance, but it can cause graded changes locally in the membrane potential. Let's see what do I mean by graded changes. For simplicity, I have drawn a simple multipolar neuron and this neuron has four dendrite and only one exon. Say all the dendrites are connected to a synaptic junction. And we know that in synaptic junction, neurotransmitter binds to a ligand gated ion channel. If in dendrite number one, ligand gated sodium channel opens, then positive charge enters into the cell. Similarly, if in dendrite two, ligand gated potassium channel opens, then potassium exit the cell because there are high concentration of potassium inside. And so the inside becomes more negative. In dendrite three, if neurotransmitter acts on chloride channel, then chloride ions enters into the cell as there are more chloride outside. So the inside becomes more negative. Similarly, in dendrite 4, say calcium channel opens and as there are more calcium outside, so calcium enters into the cell. All these charges randomly diffuses into the cell body and when it reaches near exon hillock, exon hillock does a little integration here. Just to understand, say 2 calcium diffused, 3 sodium diffused and 5 chloride ion diffused. So the net change in charge inside the membrane is, let's calculate plus 2. Due to net positive charge inside, the resting membrane potential will decrease. Whereas if there were net negative inside, then the resting membrane potential would have been increased. This change in resting membrane potential as a result of integrating inputs from different ion channels of the cell is referred to as graded membrane potential. If after integration of inputs, there are net negative inside, then the cell will never generate action potential. And if there are net positive inside, and the membrane potential difference slowly decreases and decreases to a threshold level of minus 55 millivolt, then there will be a generation of action potential. Now let's understand the ionic changes in action potential. So we have learned the decrease in membrane potential from minus 65 
to minus 55 due to the entry of positive charge triggers an action potential. So this value of minus 55 millivolt is referred to as a threshold potential. When this threshold potential is reached in exon hillock, the voltage gated sodium channel opens. And due to the opening of more and more this voltage gated sodium channels, there occurs depolarization. That means the inside is more positive than the outside now. Now from our concept of voltage gated sodium channel, we know that when the membrane potential is more positive, then sodium channel inactivates itself. And at this moment, the voltage gated potassium channel opens. So voltage gated potassium channel opens when the membrane is in depolarized state and potassium leaks out of the cell as there are more potassium inside and less potassium outside as well as the electric gradient also supports it. So for potassium, both electric gradient and the chemical gradient are towards outside and we call it electrochemical gradient. Earlier when the cell was in rest, the electric gradient was towards inside because outside was more positive and the chemical gradient for potassium was towards outside because inside has more potassium. But now both electric and chemical gradient are towards outside. What is interesting to note here is that the potassium channel has no activation gate. So it stays open for a longer period. So more and more potassium comes out of the cell and the membrane potential becomes negative again. And this process is referred to as repolarization. To restore resting membrane potential, sodium potassium ATPase pump works continuously all the time. Here you need to understand that for a brief period of time, this part of the neuron cannot be excited again. And this is called absolute refractory period. It's because the voltage sensitive sodium channel are in inactivated state. And now it would not respond even if the membrane potential reaches threshold level. This absolute refractory period helps the neuron to generate action potential, keeping a minimum time interval between two consecutive stimulus. So it keeps action potential from happening too closely. And it also keeps action potential from moving backward because of the slow acting voltage gated potassium channel, more and more potassium comes out of the cell and the inside becomes more negative and it is referred to as hyperpolarization. Here the membrane potential is more negative than the resting membrane potential. In this state, the voltage gated sodium channel returns back to its closed state so that it can be stimulated again to open and the voltage gated potassium channel still remain open. This particular state of the neuron is referred to as relative refractory period. In this relative refractory period, this part of the neuron can be stimulated again, but not through normal stimulus, but it requires a stronger stimulus. And during this relative refractory period, the voltage gated potassium channel closes, which brings the membrane potential back to its equilibrium condition due to the flow of iron through leak channels. So action potential is the fluctuation in the membrane potential difference from a polarized state to depolarized then repolarized, then hyperpolarized, and then again polarized. Let's observe the graphical representation of this action potential. Here we are observing the change in membrane potential when a squid exon is stimulated with respect to time. In the resting state, the membrane potential of the squid exon was minus 65 millivolt, and at that time, the voltage gated sodium channel and the voltage gated potassium channel were closed. Due to the graded potential, if there are net positive inside, then the voltage difference decreases and it approaches towards zero. If there are entry of net negative charge inside, then the membrane potential approaches towards more negative. So when there are more positive charge inside due to the binding of neurotransmitter, then we call it excitatory post synaptic potential. And due to this, the voltage may reach to the threshold, which is in our case minus 55 millivolt and at the threshold level the voltage gated sodium channel opens leading to entry of more and more sodium inside but this is very short-lived and the sodium channel soon inactivates itself when the membrane potential depolarizes that is it reaches plus 40 then voltage gated sodium channels are inactivated whereas voltage gated 
potassium channel just opens as soon as voltage gated potassium channel opens potassium moves outside and the membrane potential becomes more negative as the potassium channels are slow to respond membrane potential drops beyond resting membrane potential and we call it hyperpolarization and finally when the voltage sensitive sodium channels returns back to its closed state and the voltage sensitive potassium channels are also in closed state then the membrane slowly returns to its resting membrane potential during all these phases sodium leak channel potassium leak channel and sodium potassium atps pump were active here you can observe that absolute refractory period is the time interval when the neuron cannot be stimulated no matter what but relative refractory period is the time interval when a neuron can be stimulated by a strong stimulus here the propagation of action potential can be summarized as follows when some positively charged ions arrives at region a the resting membrane potential changes from minus 70 to say minus 60 then the voltage gated sodium channel will not open and this is called sub threshold stimulus even if the membrane potential reaches up to minus 56 millivolt then also it is sub threshold the moment membrane potential reaches the value of minus 55 millivolt then we call a threshold stimulus has arrived in response to a threshold stimulus the voltage gated sodium channel opens and sodium rushes into the cell for a brief period of time this causes the inside of the cell to become more positive and we call a depolarization has occurred due to depolarization the membrane potential reverses from minus 70 millivolt to plus 40 millivolt sodium after entering into the exoplasm diffuses in all possible directions we can say this region is now in depolarized state and earlier it was in polarized state in the depolarized state outside is relatively negative and inside is more positive so there is a flow of current from region b to region a in the outer side of the membrane and from region a to region b in the inner side of the membrane so a local circuit of ionic current is completed in non myelinated axon like this typically found in non vertebrates the speed of the conduction of action potential depends on the resistance of the exoplasm the resistance is again dependent on the diameter of the axon in a small diameter axon negatively charged proteins in the exoplasm prevents the flow of positively charged ions inside so the exoplasm of the small diameter axon does not allow charge to move over a long distance hence it reduces the length of the local circuit so that only the region of the membrane immediately in front of the action potential is involved in the local circuit but in case of large diameter axons there is less resistance and more space in the exoplasm for the movement of positively charged ions so positively charged ions can move over a long distance and can form a local circuit of much greater length so many invertebrates like annelida arthropoda and mollusca contains giant axon for faster conduction of impulse as they are devoid of myelinated neuron now let's come back to the region a of our axon where depolarization just occurred and the membrane potential reached plus 40 millivolt but as soon as the membrane potential reaches plus 40 millivolt the voltage gated sodium channel gets inactivated whereas the voltage gated potassium channel just opened due to the outward movement of potassium the inside of the axon becomes negative again and we call it repolarization and the membrane potential returns back to its resting membrane potential of minus 70 millivolt similarly for the region b due to the diffusion of some plus charge from region a the membrane potential changes from minus 70 to its threshold level which is minus 55 and so again this region will be depolarized and then again repolarized and so on so the membrane potential in the region b due to the entry of sodium will change to plus 40 and we call it depolarization phase so the wave of depolarization has passed from region a to region b the positive charges that now entered into region b will diffuse into region c as well as region a but region a due to the exit of more potassium 
is in the state of hyperpolarization which means it has more negative insight and the voltage gated sodium channels will not open and we call it a state of refractory period so it prevents the backward flow of action potential along the axon so i think the propagation of action potential is clear to you all another important property of action potential is all or none law here you can see in this diagram that if the strength of the stimulus is less so that it cannot reach the threshold level of minus 55 millivolt then there will be no action potential and the stimulus is said to be a sub threshold stimulus but when the stimulus is strong enough to reach the voltage of minus 55 millivolt then an action potential of full strength will fire now if you apply a stimulus of much more strength which we call a supra threshold stimulus still the action potential will remain of same strength because that is the maximum strength with which an action potential can fire so either an action potential will generate with its full strength or it will not generate at all so this is all or none law now let's observe the propagation of action potential in myelinated and unmyelinated neuron in this animation we can observe that a region of depolarization moves forward and with a region of hyperpolarization following the depolarization wave and it acts as refractory period to prevent back flow of action potential in the axon of myelinated neuron the separation of charges or the generation of resting membrane potential can be found only in the node of ranvier in this neuron the voltage gated sodium channel and the voltage gated potassium channel can only be found in the nodes of this axon so the myelin sheath which is mostly composed of lipid acts as an insulator here and it prevents the leakage of any ions across the plasma membrane so this region allows the flow of ionic electric current to spread further along the inside of the membrane so in myelinated neuron action potential is generated only at the node of ranvier so the speed of conduction of action potential in the myelinated neuron is much faster than unmyelinated neuron in the unmyelinated neuron ionic electric current flows along the axon forming smaller local circuit but in case of myelinated neuron due to the presence of insulation ionic electric charges can flow over a longer distance and thus a larger local circuit can be produced in a myelinated neuron depolarization appears to jump from one node of ranvier to another allowing these neurons to conduct nerve impulse at a much faster rate but if sodium diffuses from one node of ranvier to another then it would take much time as diffusion is a very slow process so what happens is that when some sodium enters into the axon through a node of ranvier then some sodium electrostatically repels other sodium which are already present in the region covered by myelin sheath so the sodium entered in this node is not required to travel all the way to that node rather it travels a very less effective distance and this type of conduction is called saltatory conduction and it can be found in all the longer neurons of our body saltatory also means jumping as the action potential appears to jump from one node to another